Okay, I think we're live. <laughs> so um, welcome to the first of the tomorrow. Uh, if you have just arrived, where have you been? You've missed loads of cool stuff, but don't worry, there's some amazing things coming up. And I think uh, this is uh, one, one brilliant example of it. I've been looking forward to this show. So Marty will be answering the Q&A at the end of the session. So um, I, I will collect them for him and we'll find some time at the end to answer so he can, he can keep doing the demos without burning his, burning his head off. Um, Marty is originally from the south of London and he's always been a science geek, apparently. He went off to Cambridge University to study natural sciences, very impressive, and then did a PhD in plant cell biology at the John Innes Institute in Norwich. Uh, I think they're here today, actually. Marty has been making science television for over 20 years. You might know him best as the science reporter on BBC One flagship programme, The One Show. I'm going to shut up and turn my camera off and leave you in his, I'm not, I would say safe hands, but I'm not entirely convinced. Over to you, Marty. Hello, everybody. Yes, my name is Marty Jobson. I'm a science communicator. And Rod, you've been stalking me, it would appear. Either that or you just read my biography that's on my website, one or the other. OK, so this is a show called Zap! with an exclamation mark in block capitals. It's because I shout it at you. Um, and basically what, what happened is over the many years, I messed around with a lot of high voltage um, equipment and demos, and I've built some myself. In fact, I built quite a few, and that's how I got into high voltage stuff. So this, uh, this show is really about showing you some of those high voltage demos and some of the less high voltage demos and just some general electrical demos because what I'm going to try and do is to put the awesome back into electricity because electricity is a fantastic sort of force of nature. If you see a, a thunder sort of clap and a lightning strike, that is without a shadow of a doubt, one of the most awesome things um, in the natural world. So what I've done is I've come down to my local community centre here in Yorkshire, which is where I live these days, and I've got myself set up to go. Um, it's quite humid in here, and that's not a good thing. It turns out that this place has not been used for some months um, and is all quite cold. So they've got the heating on, but hopefully uh, everything will work because a lot of electrical demonstrations don't like humidity. So, okay, let's get on with it. The first thing I want to talk to you about, I want to talk to you about the very beginnings of electricity. The very beginnings of electricity go all the way back to a guy called Thales of Miletus. Now, Thales of Miletus, ancient Greek, 600 BC, Thales of Miletus. And Thales of Miletus discovered something very significant. He discovered that if you take a piece of amber, so that's fossilized tree resin, and you rub it against a cat, something peculiar happens. Number one, the cat gets rather annoyed with you and runs away. But number two, the cat's fur stands on end. Now it's quite interesting. This is one of those pieces of the history of science and it's in the books, but is it true? Maybe, maybe not. We really don't know, but it does work. If you rub amber on cats, the hair stands on end and is attracted to the amber. And that's because you've made static electricity. And in fact, the word in Greek for amber is electros, which is where we get our word electricity from. Now, I have a demonstration that I'm going to show that I normally show people at this point, um, but because it's quite humid in here, it's not working very well. And I've had to downgrade it from the, the maxi version to the mini version. So I have here, what I've got here is, it's so small, you can hardly see it. I hope this is going to work. People probably won't be able to see this. If I sort of, if I move my head there, there you can see it. There's a little sort of fragment of, it's actually, it's actually um, tinsel from Christmas. It's a little bit of mylar film. So what that is, is metal coated onto plastic. So it's a conductor. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some static electricity. I'm not gonna use cats and um, amber because A, cats, let's face it, and B, amber. Don't wanna to touch that because that's expensive. So instead I'm gonna use a piece of polypropylene plastic rod and a piece of fake fur. Now, I have them just over there sitting on the radiator because they're, dry, they're keeping it dried out. So um, I'll just rush over and grab them. And then what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna do this all quite quickly because <laughs> what I don't want to happen is I don't, uh, the longer I take, the less well this works. So I'll just sort of race through this. And before I go though, I'm gonna switch to my other camera, which is this camera over here. I'm gonna come over here. Hello, here I am going over here to get the wand and which is always lovely and warm. And it's, okay, so where's the camera? There's the camera. So I have my plastic rod there. I have a piece of fake fur. I get to rub one against the other. I'm rubbing really 
and I can just about hear that I'm making a little bit of static electricity by rubbing the two against each other. So now moving quickly, pick that up, drop that on there like, what's stuck to my finger? There. Ooh, ha, ooh. there. And I shall bring it closer. And you have. Oh, it's too close. I'll try again. For a, oh, for a moment there, I think, hopefully you saw that it was floating in the air. I'm going to try that once more. Carefully peel that off. And charge up. What do I do with my bit of fake fur? There it is. Charge up my plastic wand again. And what I'm doing when I'm rubbing the wand like this is actually I'm rubbing electrons and it's the movement of electrons that gives us electricity from the piece of fur onto the wand. Now, you're thinking, so what are electrons? You might have heard of them. Well, electrons are part of an atom. So everything in the world is made of atoms. You're made of atoms, I'm made of atoms, the air in between us is made of atoms, the electrical cables that are carrying the signal to you are made of atoms. But what's actually making the signal go from this camera to you is actually electrons, and the electrons are part of atoms. Okay, this is actually, this is, now we're getting a little bit of charge on this. I can hear it going click, 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 you might be able to hear it. Maybe, I don't know, can't tell. So, okay, put that down. Oh, it's hard work, this. Pick that up. We'll try this again. See if I can get this to work. As I say, this is not behaving. There, oh yes, it's floating. It's floating, <gasps> floating, no, it went too close. But you could see that I managed to get this to float in the air. And what happens is I drop it onto here like this. It picks up a load of electrons. And then because electrons like charges, because an electron has a charge, we say, it's got a negative charge, pushes away from the wand and it makes it float in the air. And you can try this at home. It's a little bit tricksy. Do it on a nice hot day, not a, a sort of a cold, dank day like today, but a nice warm day um, in sort of the, the height of summer or something like that. Piece of plastic pipe, fake fur, good charge on it and then you can make that float in the air. You can do it with a balloon as well, you don't need a plastic wand. Right, I'm going to put that down and uh, grab this and come back to this camera here. Might put that there. Ah, might come off my finger now. Right, so I'm completely puffed now. Let's put that down there. Excellent. Right. So that's the very beginnings of electricity. People messing around, making, charging up pieces of amber and sticking things to them and making things float in the air and hassling cats, basically. That's how it all begins. So the question is, what happens after that? Because to understand how we tamed electricity, which, let's face it, is really what we've done, you have to start with the history of science. I like the history of science. It gives you a, a story to tell. And you have to leave it for about 2,000 years. Nothing much happens for 2,000 years until you get into the 1600s. And then people realise that hassling cats is quite a nuisance. So what they did was they made machines. They made static electricity machines that would help them sort of were automatic cat hasslers that didn't involve cats, if you could see what I mean. And you could use those to make static electricity. And by the way, the reason why it's called static electricity is because when you create all the electrons, you build them up on your whatever it is, they don't move. They're static, they sit still. That's what the static bit of static electricity means. So I built myself a static electricity generator. I call it the beast. Um, let me introduce you to the beast. This here is the beast. Da, 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 da. There it is. The beast is a machine. It's actually a machine called a Van de Graaff generator. I'll come in here and focus on me a little bit. A Van de Graaff generator, if I step to there, you can see it. 
There it is, a Van de Graaff generator, invented by a guy called Mr. Van de Graaff, perhaps not surprisingly, um, in about 1929. Now, obviously, that's not the first static electricity generator. The first static electricity generator was invented by a guy called Otto von Goericke in 1663. So, you know, hundreds of years before. But this one is the one that most people have encountered. There's another one that people have sometimes encountered called a Wimshurst, but that's a, a, a late, uh, an 18th century machine, uh, sort of a 19th century machine. The Van de Graaff, though, is the standard piece of kit. And most people have, most schools have got one. They're very temperamental. They also do not like um, humidity. Now, why don't, why does static, I keep going on about how humid it is and why this is best done in warm weather. And the reason is, is because if things are a little bit damp, all those electrons can run down through any dampness. And this room feels dry, but I can feel it sort of cold and ever so slightly humid in here. And that means that this machine is gonna, it's gradually becoming coated with a layer of humidity, a layer of moisture, and that will stop um, it working eventually. So we'll get onto this one as well because I've hair dried it to dry it out. So the obvious thing to do when you make one of these machines is to get a big spark off it. Um, now, uh, I'm going to try and make a big spark for you. Um, and well, let me just say, you'll see what happens when I make a spark. Just keep watching the machine uh, and we'll see if we can make a big spark. So what I do, uh, I turn it on over here. I've got this thing here, this, by the way, this is called the discharge wand. So what's going to happen is electrons are going to build up on this machine here, on the top here, on this big metal ball. And by the way, um, for the very, very observant, you'll notice, or you might notice, that those awfully look awfully like IKEA fruit bowls, because they are. Because um, that's the way my brain works when I was going around IKEA. So let's get it going. We're building up electrons at the top, building up, building up. I'm going to discharge. Oh, that was a good one. And you notice my camera keeps blacking out. I'm watching. Like that. You see that my camera just blacked out. And occasionally you'll see one of these sparks, but more often than not, what happens is the camera blacks out. This camera here just goes black for a moment. And that's because every time I make a spark, I also make what's known as an electromagnetic pulse, an EMP pulse. And that EMP pulse of electrical magnetic energy flies through the air. And because this camera is quite sensitive, and there's lots of wires attached, it gets picked up. And for a moment, there's too much electricity in the camera. It actually makes electricity in the circuitry and it blacks out momentarily. So, okay, that means we have a slight problem because this camera, it's not very good at showing sparks. I have another camera over here, which is a bit better. And um, what we might do is we're gonna try, it's actually working, that was working all right, and I've got plenty of time. So what I might do is uh, I might try turning the lights out. Uh, not yet, not yet. <laughs> I have a helper at the back. Um, not quite yet, but... Um, uh, oh, hold on, people. Oh, yeah, sorry, I just saw something pop up on my screen, so I thought I'd just give that a quick check. That's all right. Um, but yes, um, what I'll do is I'm going to turn the lights out and we're going to see if we can make some sparks and I'll use a different camera, this camera here, um, and I'll put myself up in this corner. So uh, I'm over here. You've now got two pictures of me. There's one over here. See, I'm here, here I am, but I'm also here. Okay, now this camera, this camera is a slightly different type of camera. This camera is a web camera. These cameras, the other cameras are not web cameras. This web camera, okay, is um, less susceptible to the EMP pulse. And hopefully if I've got it pointing in the right direction, it's not quite pointing in the right direction. And is it focused? Yeah, about focused. So when I'm over here like this, I'll be able to make a spark and maybe you'll be able to see it. So let's bring the lights down. I'm gonna turn off, uh, some lights and we're going to turn off some other lights and then I'm actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do that because if I turn off all the lights I can't actually see what I'm doing so now it's completely black you can't see me at all but I'm right in front of the camera let's see if we can make some sparks and hopefully you can see the sparks this time Oh, there's a little one. Oh, God, it started to hurt. You probably saw that one. 
I'll let it build up for a big one. Okay, I'm, I can't tell whether I'm too, the trouble is there's too many things to look at. Right, bring the lights back on, lights back on. We'll come back to the lights because I could spend hours just sort of not showing you sparks. And this is a real problem for this demo. Um, I've discovered over the years doing this, um, doing this thing online um, is people can't see the sparks. And obviously in person, it's lovely because you can see all the sparks. But um, we have a slight problem here and that's to do with just how big this machine is. The beast kills cameras. So what we have to do if we're going to look at the beast, rather than looking at the sparks that it makes, and I don't know, you'll have to tell me afterwards if you actually saw any sparks on the cameras, because I could see sparks. It was some really big ones. I could feel them in my forearm. Um, what we're gonna have to do is, um, I'm gonna have to show you the effects of these high voltages. I've got the wrong camera on. I want that camera on the effects of these high voltages. So one of the things that they did when they discovered that they had, they'd made these machines, they made static electricity machines, is they discovered that people seem to be rather keen on seeing all the crazy, stupid things they could do with them. So what happened is a breed of gentlemen uh, arose called electricians. Now, the electricians weren't called Bob, and they didn't sort of come around and fix your electrics because there were no electrics at that point. Instead, they generally were quite posh guys, and they would go around uh, and they would um, put on electrical soirees for the very, very rich and the very, very posh. So we're talking kind of 1700s, beginning of the 1700s. And at these electrical soirees, they would do great demonstrations of this newfangled electricity that they'd found. And one of the things they used to like doing most is charging people up. Because what I've got there is I've got a whole pile of electrons on top of that thing there. Now, what happens if we attach a person to that and he looks around at the empty hall I mean, there's one person at the sat back, but he's not doing it. Um, and there is really only one person who can do this in this room, and that is clearly me. I mean, if we, had, if we had an audience, I'd just get one of you to do it, but you know, you're at home, so it's a bit tricksy. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to charge myself up to a very, very high voltage, a very, very, very high voltage. Um, at the moment, this machine is running, it will run up to um, 300,000 volts, so a third of a million volts. At the moment, it's only running at about 200,000 volts because of the humidity, see previous. So I will charge myself up to 200,000 volts and we will see what happens. Um, you might know, you might guess what happens, but it doesn't always happen. So I'm gonna bring this in a bit closer and then I'm gonna move back here. And I'm, I am actually going, I'm going to need my, my little plastic wand uh, for reasons that will become clear. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to stand on, um, there's a little box here. Um, it's from Ikea. It's one of those little plastic stools. I'm going to stand on that. And that insulates me so that previously, at the moment, if you're standing on the ground, you're really close to earth. So any buildup of electricity will jump straight to earth. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have to squat slightly as well like this. I'll come forward as well to here like that, okay. How's that, that's about right, yeah. Let's bring it in ever so slightly closer just so that you can actually see what's going on like that. Okay, right, I'll be like that. Um, we'll see what happens, right, here you go. So you start with your hand on the machine and then sort of squatting uncomfortably. Is it gonna work? Am I, is it working, is it working? Is it working? I can, yeah, I think I can just about see, I can't quite see, but um, I've specially not conditioned my hair this morning. Um, and I think I'm, my hair is beginning to stand on end. And yes, indeed, well, your hair begins to stand on end. I'm gonna stop this. I can feel all the hairs on my body standing on end. It's really quite uncomfortable. I'm going to discharge like that. Didn't get much discharge there. Let me just try this again. Hold on. Yeah, okay. Good. All right. So your hair begins to stand on end. Your hair starts. It's just only just a little bit too hum much humidity. One other demonstration that they liked, they used to like doing. Um, which works on the same principle. And just, if you think about this for a second, when you do the hair standing on end demo, what's going on is all the electrons that are piled up on there are racing onto your body and they race onto your body and they pile up on your body. And then because they're on your hair as well, 
They push against each other because like charges repel each other. They push away from each other. Okay, and um, that makes your hair stand on end. And the reason, actually, the reason why you don't use conditioner when you do this demo is if you use conditioner, conditioner all usually has um, anti-static uh, chemicals in it that specifically to stop your hair standing on end. So I have here the remains of a sort of a binge at Christmas all the Christmas pie dishes, the Christmas, the, the mince pies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that on the top of um, there like that. Uh, I'm going to adjust the camera ever so slightly so that you can see a little bit higher up. Ooh, like that. And then we'll turn it on and hopefully things will work. And there they go. They all fly off. Um, some bigger ones, bigger ones. Here we go, big pie dishes. Oh, a little bit more sedate, but they're still coming off. Fend them off and discharge, pow. Nice big fat discharge there. And the, the pie dishes all fly into the air. And of course, the reason the pie dishes fly into the air is exactly the same reason that your hair flies into the air. Oh, I'll bring it down again, bring the camera down. So you can actually see me. It's the same reason your hair stands on end. The pie dishes, um, electrons pile up on the pie dishes, and then the electrons on the top pie dish push against the electrons on the bottom pie dish, and it lifts that in the air and it flows away. Right, get rid of all that lot. That you have a bad habit of tripping over things. Now, one of the guys um, that became very keen on electricity. I'm going to come back to this camera now. One of the guys that became very keen on electricity was a guy called Benjamin Franklin. Now, Benjamin Franklin, one of the founding fathers of America, very important in the electrical soiree circuit as well. Excuse me. <coughs> and um, he did a whole load of electricity experiments and discovered a lot of the things. And in fact, um, it was him and his buddies that named positive and negative charge. It was they that came up with the idea of having two different charges. Um, so Benjamin Franklin, though, um, he used to like doing, I mean, he did a bunch of proper science, but he also used to like demonstrating with electricity for his mates. And one of the things he used to do was um, he, he had a particular penchant for having electrical um, dinner parties. And they would do all sorts of crazy electricity experiments and they would... Um, uh, have have dinner together and one of his tricks was to charge himself up with one of these machines and then to use his finger once he's charged up to discharge to a glass of um, brandy so uh, something with lots of alcohol in and it would ignite the brandy now I wanted to try and do this experiment myself but um, brandy was quite expensive. So I decided, and actually when brandy's burning, you can't really see it. So I tried to come up with a slightly different version of that experiment, and I came up with this. What I decided to do instead was get hold of, um, and heaven knows what, how, really how this experiment came together. This was one of those sort of demonstrations that came out of my, uh, my imagination for no apparent reason. So what we have here is a balloon. This balloon is full of a flammable gas. It's full of actually a gas called hydrogen. And it's attached to, can you see this, this copper pipe here. Right? Um, and at the end of the copper pipe, there's a wire. Ooh, you can just see a balloon. That's better. At the end of the copper pipe, there's a wire. Now that wire, I'm going to attach to earth. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to charge myself up, just like I did when my hair stood on end, a bit. And then I'm going to discharge through my hand to this metal pipe. The electrons that have built up on me will race up the pipe, the outside of the pipe. They will then jump through a little gap inside here, which you can't see, and then come back down the wire, which runs all the way up the inside of the pipe. Okay. So that means we will create a spark inside this balloon full of hydrogen. And that will ignite the balloon full of hydrogen. Because when you want to ignite something, you need three things. You need a fuel, hydrogen. You need a source of ignition, the little spark. You also actually need a third thing. And the third thing you need 
is oxygen. It's called the, the combustion triangle or the, the flamey triangle thing, as I usually call it, because I can never remember combustion triangle. So um, I don't have any oxygen yet in there because it's pure hydrogen, which is a, it's actually for safety. I, I, I leave the oxygen out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow into this balloon um, some some oxygen from my breath. So I'm just going to huff into the balloon and it will expand a little bit and that will put oxygen into it because you breathe out oxygen because you don't use all the oxygen you breathe in. So are you ready? <gasps> ah, that's a little bit big for comfort. There. So we've now got hydrogen, we've got oxygen. We're going to make a spark and we're going to see if we can ignite the balloon. I mean, there are several ways I can do this demonstration, I should point out. There is the painful way, which is what I was hope, planning on doing. I mean, I can do the painless way, which is where I use a... No, of course you don't want the painless way, you want the painful way. What was I thinking? Right, so that goes into there like that. Let's go back to this, this camera here. Right, well, uh, we just need to arrange this, we'll bring this back. Um, and put that there like that so the balloon is sort of center stage which is what because that's what you really want to see you want to see the balloon go bang okay uh, and as far away from me as possible now i'm going to don some safety equipment uh, i'm going to put on these uh ear defenders because i'm quite close to this uh, so i'm going to put the ear defenders on like that uh, and then i'm going to put this face shield on because um, as I say, hold on, face shield on, like that, ear defenders on, there's, oop, there's quite a lot on, oop, it's sli sliding off me, right, and then I'm going to charge myself up, and then once I'm charged up, I will, ugh, things are falling off, I will discharge to this metal pole here with the back of my hand like that and that should ignite the balloon hopefully it won't knock anything over and it won't set fire to anything i hope um i hope if if we go quiet for a little while don't worry i'm sure nothing bad has happened right okay here we go let's do this uh turning on the van de Graaff. charging myself up Ugh. are you ready three two one oh Three, two, one. I'm not getting enough charge. Hold on. Not getting enough charge. What I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to do it the painless way. Oh, my ear defenders are falling off and that's falling out my ear. It's all going wrong. Right, let's try again. Let's charge it up. See if we can get a better charge off this. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Ah. <laughs> Three, two. I hate this experiment. Okay, it's not going, it's not going. It's not going. It's not gonna go. Uh, too humid in here, too much moisture, not getting enough charge. So what we're gonna do is I have a, a backup plan uh, just to prove that there is a flammable gas in there. What we're gonna do? is I'll do it the old fashioned way and we'll ignite it like this. So it didn't quite work, not quite working, but you know, gave it my best British try. So we'll, instead we'll provide the source of ignition this way, good old fashioned. There we go. Lit spill, there you go, three, two, one, just to prove it works. Oof, there it is. Nice big spark, um, set that off. No, but there you go, close enough. Okay, so you can see, I hope, where am I, I'm over here. You can see, I hope, that there are problems to doing these static electricity demonstrations. They're not the easiest. So let's move on to something that will work, I hope. Let's move on to um, some of the other reasons why we tamed electricity, and I'm just having a look at the time. Yes, good, we've got plenty of time. So um, that's the beginning of electrical demonstrations. That's the beginning of messing around with electricity. But those things are 
I mean, quite frankly, those things are just toys and games and experiments, and sometimes they don't work, clearly. What you actually need is your spectacles, which are in your pocket there. What you actually need to do, though, is we need to be able to use electricity more practically, and that's where we can get into the story of how that was tamed. Now, let me switch to this camera here, and we need to move on to about 1800. And we move on to two guys, Alessandro Volta and Luigi Galvani. Now, these two guys, these two guys discovered something very significant. They discovered that if you take two metals, and here are two metals, and this is now not focused quite right. That's about focus there. If you take two metals, okay, I've got here a piece of copper, okay, just a copper wire, and this is a galvanized nail, and that means that it's coated in zinc. So I've got copper and I've got zinc. And if you insert them into something like a lemon, which is nice and acidic, thus, Okay, and then you attach that to this machine here. Now, this machine here is called a voltmeter and it measures voltage. Oops, let me just untangle myself. And if I attach now this cable here to the zinc, like that, we get a voltage. We get 0.84 volts. So we've made a battery. And that's what Galvani and Volta discovered. And in fact, it was Galvani that first noticed it. And he was dissecting a frog at the time. And he had a copper knife and a zinc coated plate. And as he dissected the frog, the frog's legs started to twitch, which freaked him out somewhat. But what he realized was that this meant that he was making electricity. But it was, and it was Volta that actually worked out exactly what was going on and made the battery. It became known as the voltaic pile. Now, just to prove that this is really just to do with the metals that we use, if I change the metal, so if I take this out, so the zinc, get rid of that, and replace it with this, and this is a piece of magnesium ribbon. So I'll insert that in there like that. And magnesium is another type of metal. And if I now attach my, the black lead to that, I get double the voltage. And the reason is magnesium is a much more reactive metal. So it's much better at doing chemistry. It does much more chemistry, much quicker, so to speak. And really what you have here in the battery is a promise of electrical energy. Because when you unplug it, there's no voltage. When you plug it in, you get voltage. But there's virtually no current, which is why you don't use lemons. Now, okay, I'm starting to use words like voltage and current as if everybody understands what they are, which I know for a fact most people don't. I certainly don't understand them particularly well, and I talk about them all the time. Most people really have a very bad understanding of what is going on with voltage and current. So here we go. This is how voltage and current work. And this is what they are. Imagine that this is an electron. And that here, sort of imagine in front of my face, there is a copper wire, imaginary. And when an electron flows along that copper wire like that, right, we have passed a current. A current has moved from this side through to this side. And if I had two electrons and two electrons moved across, I doubled the current because the current is just the number of electrons that are moving. Double the current, the number of electrons, you double the current. So what is voltage then? Well, voltage is how much oomph you have to push the electron from one side to the other. Technically, it's how much work you can do. So imagine at the moment, this is air and this electron moves very easily. Imagine that I was underwater, pushing the electron through the water would be slightly harder. If I was underwater in honey, it would be even under, that's not really underwater then, is it? It's under honey. Submerged in honey, pushing that through the honey would be really hard work, okay? So there would be, I would need more voltage to get the current to move. So even though the current stays the same, you can have a different voltage. So what you have with this battery here, okay, is plenty of voltage, so I can move electrons reasonably, you know, there's pu plenty of push to move the electrons, but what I don't have is any oomph. There's nothing, sorry, I don't have many electrons, I've got plenty of oomph, but not many electrons. 
Let's move on to the next thing that really tamed electricity for us. Let's move on to another guy, another bloke, another guy called Faraday. Michael Faraday, I want to talk to you about. Now, Michael Faraday was um, a very clever chap that did lots of brilliant things. But one of the most brilliant things he did was he realised that electricity and um, magnetism are linked together. So I've got here a magnet in the middle and there's a wire hanging down. Right. And I'm going to attach this to a big old battery here like this. So the metal tray here, which is a Frey Bentos pie tin, that's not important, I just like to tell you that, um, will go to the positive and the wire here that dangles will go to the negative. But before I do that, I'm actually going to fill the tray with very concentrated salt water because that is conductive. Now when Faraday did this, he actually did it with um, mercury, which is very toxic which is why I don't use that. So uh, attach that to there, like that. Attach that to there, so we have a current flowing. And as soon as you do that, kapow, it moves, it rotates. This is the world's first electric motor. Um, it was uh, 1821 when Faraday first invented the electric motor. And admittedly, it's not really something that you can do much with, but this is it, this is where it all begins. And it's actually, it's known as a homopolar motor and you can make these really easily. What you need is some really big bat magnets. These are what are called neodymium magnets, okay? They're very powerful, very strong, quite dangerous. Do be careful of them if they nip you. And there's a battery, I'm gonna put that there. Like that. We'll go a bit closer. Like that. Oops, get that and then just focus that like that. that focus. That's focused. And then what I'm going to do is I've got here a piece of curly wire and I'm just going to pop that over the, mag the battery like that. And I'm going to, and if I get it right, there it goes. And it starts to rotate. Here's another one. Same idea, slightly different um, design. Uh, smaller magnet, sm same size magnets, smaller, um, and I have to make sure I don't put these too care close together or that happens. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't want that to happen. Uh, so I have to put that, I'll put that as far as away as I can over here, like that. And I'll put that one there. Then I have a different shaped piece of metal. Okay, that goes on there like that. And away it goes. Oh, that one stopped. I think that one's the batteries, the magnets are in the wrong place now. They have to be dead center. There we go. So those are three, what are known as homopolar motors, okay? Homopolar, they only have one pole on them and they just spin around like that. And from these, we develop the sort of motors that you have in battery drills and the motor that's in your phone that makes it vibrate and the motor that's, um, that's uh, that, well, any motor really, that's, uh, that's in your hairdryer that pushes the air out of the end of your hairdryer. Very simple but it allows us to do things with electricity. And it's all because magnetism and electricity go hand in hand, always together at the same time. And in fact, they are the same thing to a certain extent. I'll turn this off to stop this. And I don't want to drain that battery completely because I need it again. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these carefully out of the way so that they don't jump to each other. I'll go for another one. So the next thing I wanna show you the next invention is that really tames electricity is this thing, this thing here. And this is, well, it's going to be a light bulb. And that's, you have to understand that one of the reasons why electricity is dangerous is because it causes heat when it moves through something. So when a current flows, I'll just go back to me here, when a current flows, so when your electron flows, oh, it's gone blue, when the electron flows through something, because it has to sort of move around things, you get friction, which means you get heat. Okay, friction, if you rub your hands together, it gets hot. Exactly the same thing happens when you get electricity moving, electrons moving through something, you get heat. And if you get this just right, you can get lots and lots of heat. And if it gets very, very hot, it begins to glow. And that is the basic principle for light bulbs, or at least the early light bulbs, the sort that you don't find anymore, incandescent light bulbs. And incandescent light bulbs, by the way, they're called change the world because they allowed us to do things after dark. Before incandescent light bulbs, 
When it went dark, that was it, end of day, you had to go to bed, unless you had a candle, but candles were really expensive. Um, as soon as you begin to have electricity, which is relatively cheap, and light bulbs, you could work and you could do things at night. You could make your dinner at night. You could um, read a book. You could do all sorts of things. You could go out at night safely. Okay, So that is where why I want to show you a light bulb, because the light bulb genuinely changed the world. And what the, the way the light bulb works is um, what we have here. Okay, this bit here. This is where the light bulb is. Okay, and hopefully you can see, if I get my hand in the right place, that between these two electrical connections at the top, there is a very thin strip of something. And that something is actually a pencil lead. The original, the first light bulbs invented by a guy called James Bowman Lindsay. Um, I have to always check the date, I can never remember, 1835 in Dundee, long before Edison, long before Swan, by the way if any of you history of science nerds out there. James Bowman Lindsay in Dundee invents basically this. And what it is, is it's a thin strip of carbon. I use a pencil lead from a propelling pencil. So it's half a millimeter thick. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach that as before, just like we did with uh, the motor, we're gonna attach it to my battery, my big old battery here, okay? And I've got, I've got a switch here that allows me to turn it on and off. And when I turn that on, what will happen is the electricity will be connected, the current will flow, the electrons will flow around the circuit and through that thin piece of carbon. And they will heat it up. And as they heat it up, um, it will begin to glow. And hopefully it will glow bright enough that we can see that we've made a light bulb. But the trouble is it gets really, really hot. So hot that it reacts with the oxygen that's in the air and it will burn away to carbon dioxide. So what I also have to do is take away the oxygen around it. And the way I do that is I get a jam jar and I put the jam jar very carefully over the top. Thus, I'll turn it around so that you don't have the label on the jam jar. And then what I'm gonna do is here, there is actually a vacuum gauge. So this tells us how much air is inside the jam jar. At the moment, it's full of air, but I want it right down here, which means that there's virtually no air inside it. So I've got a vacuum pump under the table, which I shall attach like this. Turn the vacuum pump on. Attach the vacuum pump here. And you can see immediately, I'm pumping the air out. Okay, it's being pumped out. I want to pump it out a little bit more than that. The vacuum pump is not working fantastically at the moment, but let me just make sure everything's plugged in good. Right, okay. I'll shut the valve here, so that'll trap the vacuum in, hopefully. And now we'll turn on the electricity, and hopefully we'll be able to see uh, what I might do is, can I bring the lights down again? Let's, uh, let's bring the lights down for a second. Hopefully we'll be able to see that I've made a light bulb. There it is, a light bulb in a jam jar. And this, this light bulb will stay like this for con some considerable time. There's no oxygen in there. I mean, actually what will happen is the battery will die first. But if I let the air back in, the oxygen will begin to start reacting with it. Actually, what I need to do is I'm gonna, I need to unplug the vacuum pump first, turn off the vacuum pump. I'm gonna let the air back in. There, the air goes back in. And what's happening now is all that oxygen is reacting with the carbon and actually the carbon filament is burning away, which means it gets hotter because it gets thinner, which means it gets brighter until it completely burns away. Lights back on, please. And that is the third thing that really tamed electricity for us. Unplug the battery. How are we doing for time? Let me have a little look. Good, I've got a little, a little while. Because, but the point is, all of the things I've shown you, the taming of electricity, none of them have been about the sort of electricity that actually you and I use. Because the sort of electricity that we use, tends, some of it comes from batteries, but let's face it, most of it comes from the mains. And mains electricity is not like battery electricity. Battery electricity has electrons that move Ooh, it's got a funny color, that move in one direction, okay? 
Mains electricity has alternating current, which means the electrons move backwards and forwards. They never actually go from one place to the other. They just do this. Okay. And one of the big proponents of this was a guy called Nikola Tesla, who was a um, Croatian guy. And in, in the beginning, at the, uh, just at the end of the uh, 19th century, sort of 1889, he um, really pioneered alternating current for us, which is why we can now use electricity. And I have here some of the most stupid electrical machines. Okay. Um, and this, these, this here is definitely um, one of the stupidest electrical machines. Uh, let me bring this camera down a bit so that we can actually see it. Okay. What we have here are what are known, this thing here, this is a Tesla coil. Okay, I'm going to have to sort of crouch down because I've brought the camera right down. So this thing is a Tesla coil and it uses alternating current to create huge voltages. I reckon it's about a million volts that it creates. And that means we will definitely get a really, really big spark. So we'll spark it up and see what we can do with it. I'm going to put my ear defenders on and turn it on. And I need to turn it on here as well. Right, let me just see if I do that, I can then stand here and you can sort of see both of us at the same time. Right, uh, let's bring the lights down, please. Okay, so here we go. At the moment, you're not getting many sparks per second. If I turn the sparks per second up though, you get this fantastic spot. It's about, it's about a foot long, maybe a little bit more, about 30 centimeters long. And it makes the most god awful noise. Now, now that you've seen roughly how it works, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the lights down even more. I'm gonna turn this away so that we've got very little light on. I'm gonna put this so the light is on me and not it. And then I'm gonna stand here like this. So you can see me, but not it. And did you notice how as I increase the number of sparks per second, I'll do it again. Turn up the volume, so to speak. Then I increase the number of sparks per second. It goes up in tone. And you can start to hear higher notes. If I reduce the number of sparks per second, the note goes down. And that means what I can do is this. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is really taming electricity. So that's pretty cool. Um, lights back on, please. What's cooler than one Tesla coil? Two Tesla coils, clearly. And that is why we have a second Tesla coil. If I get rid of that, you can see the second Tesla coil over here. And I'm gonna go around this way. <laughs> there is two Tesla coils. We will plug this Tesla coil in as well. That Tesla coil is plugged in. I will attach the breakout spark thing and then we'll go over here and what I have been able to do after some considerable effort I can say it took me a very long time to work this out is I am managed to get my Tesla coils to sing a duet so let's play a Tesla coil duet um, let's take the lights out please I'll turn this one on turn this one on and um, then I'm going to go to the right mode and then let's have a look let's select uh oh let's no i want uh where is it where is it i've got to find the right file okay here we go two tesla coils singing simultaneously for your pleasure
Okay, that was cool. That was uh, Everything is Awesome. Here's, here's one for the oldies. That's cool, but this one is my favorite. This one, this is, <laughs> this is called the Leven Polka. It's technically, it's a Finnish folk song. Let's see if we can get this one to work. Three, two, one. Nope. the Lieben Polka with two million volts. Right, thank you very much. A round of applause for me, yay, brilliant. Okay, right, I'm gonna go over here. I need to make these secure because this, these are hazardous machines that can cause significant harm, unplug everything. I'm gonna come back here. How am I doing for time? I've run slightly over time. Apologies, bring the lights back on. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you tame electricity with um, several million volts and uh, the leave and polka and with that thank you very much that's it that was amazing that was amazing uh, i had a bit of a boogie in my little you vr had a bit of a my vr box here <laughs> uh you got my era um have you got time for excellent questions? yeah go on hit me with some questions yeah, okay so there's a few that came through in the chat a few they basically want to know the beast did you say you built that yourself yes uh, can they make one themselves and have you thought yes. about putting your camera in a in a Faraday cage? A couple of people have asked. Yes, yes, and yes. Yes, I built that myself. Um, you can buy um, uh, Van de Graaff generators from sort of school suppliers that are kind of that big. That big. So about that big, next to the beast. They come up to about here. Uh, and they're okay. Um, but I just thought, what, what the hell? I, I'll, I'll make a bigger one. And I it's, literally, I was in IKEA and I saw these two, I saw these bowls and I saw them and I thought, wow, Tes um, Va Van de Graaff generator. I just thought, this, this is what I have to make. I have to make a really big Van de Graaff generator. So um, I bought the biggest bowls I could and I sort of, I've got them all together. And um, it's, it's, it's quite reliable. They're, Van de Graaff generators are super, super, super difficult to, to use. Um, and it's taken uh, me years um, to sort of know how to sort of coax the most out of them, even when it's, as I say, a sort of a rather humid day. So things haven't quite worked the way I wanted to. So that's one answer. What was the, what was the next answer? Can you make one? Yes. They're quite difficult to make, but you can make them, clearly. Um, could you make one? Um, if you want to mess around with static electricity, the best thing to do is just to get a balloon and hassle people with that. Rub it on your hair. Nice, dry, clean hair, preferably unconditioned. Uh, Rub it on your hair, and then you can start doing all sorts of things. You can start picking up sort of bits of paper and feathers. Um, uh, and in theory, you can do the, uh, the floating orb as well, just with a balloon, but it's more, slightly more difficult than, let's yeah. say. Not okay. so humid. Okay. What was the third question? There was a third so, question. Uh, the, oh, the Faraday cage. Because your, your camera... Oh, yes, the Faraday cage. Yes. In theory, if you put your camera in a Faraday cage, it will protect the camera. But actually, what picks up the EMP pulse is the cables. Mm -hmm. So I've, and I've tried this. You wrap your Faraday... You wrap your camera. And a Faraday cage is basically something that Faraday invented. Um, if you wrap... A, a sensitive electrical equipment in metal, basically, um, the metal around it picks up any kind of electromagnetic pulses and they will be not affect the things inside. But what picks up the electrical magnetic pulses is the fact that attached to the camera here, there's a whole load of cables and the cables pick them up as well. And the cables then transmit them up and down and into the cameras. So um, you'd have to shield all your cables as well. So um, probably the reason why this uh, webcam works best is because the cable is actually the shortest on it. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you one more question. You, I'm just actually, are you, are you able to access Hoover and ask, answer some more Q&As afterwards? Maybe, or are you rushing off somewhere um, else? 
I uh, I can do yes if people want to put questions in Hoover. I could uh, okay. get open up the app and and do it that way. That would be amazing because I, I think there's yes, a few I will, more. I will do that for um, you. They do want to know if you've released a Tesla coil album or if you plan to do no. so soon. Maybe a Christmas number well, one. Well, okay. The thing is, the, the Tesla coil, the singing Tesla coils are literally. Um, I've only just managed to sort out the different music files because I have to get music files. To, so you get a music file and then you have to break it apart so that it it, it only has because it can only play two notes at the same time each Tesla coil, and then you have to split them out and 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 I, it's, it's actually still a work in progress. Come back in a year's time, and um, I'll have um, I'll probably have developed a sort of an all-in-one controller, yeah, so I don't what, have to press the buttons. Want to sign the Tesla coil Christmas number one, Marty. That's what we're <laughs> that's what we're expecting from you. Um, so I, that's that's all the time. People have people are wanting to run between sessions, so I'm going to let people get away. But we've got a virtual planetarium coming up, so those sessions are coming. Actually, next up is. Actually, John Chase, the, rap, uh, the science rapper. So he's doing his guide to the solar system. He's and good. And also, uh, we have got an entry from the public and our rap science challenge following that show. So if you enter, wow. them, do, do check that out. Because we have, got, we have got one that we're streaming live at his show. And, and John's going to be on Hoover. He's going to, well, hopefully, to get him on the video. Actually, he's definitely going to be there. And Tringy Q&As there as well and in the chat. So go over to that. So all I want to do now is big, big thank you to Marty. Take a bow, Marty. Thank you very much. My big, pleasure. Big thank you to the audience and for all your questions. Yes. And um, fill in the feedback survey if you get one so we can make it even better. I don't know if we can decrease humidity for Marty and make him experience <laughs> more pain. Uh, other than that, see you later on the festival. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye.